Canada just defeated Suriname in the CONCACAF Nations League quarterfinal second leg 3-0 and they advanced 4-0 on aggregate. It was a pretty comfortable victory. I can't wait to talk about it. So let's dive in to my five takeaways because Canada are heading to the 2025 Gold Cup with this victory and they are also heading to the Nations League semifinals. Let's begin with my very first takeaway and that's the fact that Canada just had a dominant and professional performance. If we rewind to the last edition of this tournament, we know that Canada had a comfortable lead at home and they blew it against Jamaica. Now I know this team is different. They have honestly better team right now, better players, a better manager, but at the same time, it just shows the maturity that this group has now and what Jesse Marsh demands of this team because they went to Suriname, they had a bit of an up and down game, but away in CONCACAF picking up a one nothing victory, they need to see it through. They have better players, this is a better team and they should be able to put in a performance like this and they truly did. They completely dominated this match. The, the press was definitely something I noticed in the first match that maybe wasn't up to Jesse Marsh's standards. This match, they absolutely showed what this team can do and when they lead from the front, they can press that way. They dominated possession, they created a ton of chances and they just really saw this game out. There's a little, like a little shakiness at the beginning of the second half, but they bounce back. And that's kind of the maturity I'm, I'm talking about because in the other game, in the first leg, we saw that the second half was way worse than the first half in my opinion that's what kind of led to the shakiness this time they they stumbled a, a bit but then they they caught fire and they just showed this what this quality have this Cernon team is decent they have some good players playing in the netherlands and spread across europe but this canadian team is better they showed it and for nothing on aggregate is pretty convincing to me for my second takeaway i want to highlight three players at the back that i thought were fantastic tonight Moise bombito i mean you know, I'm, I'm repeating myself because every time I do a five takeaways, Bombito seems to find his way in it, but he was a rock at the back. He showed his strength, his maturity, his speed, which he's excellent at doing. Those recovery runs are fantastic. He's just a, a complete player right now. And on top of that, everything he did on the back end is great, but he had a phenomenal assist. Really clever looking for the run of Jacob Schaffelberg, putting in a beautiful ball. Maybe it was a bit of a keeper mistake, but regardless, Bombito put Schaffelberg in that position to score the goal. Bombito also would have scored his very first goal for Canada. Unfortunately, it was ruled out, but it was, it was you know, it was still nice to see him score. He was there. If it was, if it counted, then, then great. But regardless, he was showing he can do it on the offensive side of the game. He's been doing it on the defensive side, and he's just a joy to have right now. Had a nice partnership, honestly, with both matches with Waterman and Miller, and it doesn't really matter who you put beside Bombito, it seems like both center back pairings will have a good match. I also want to highlight the two fullbacks because I thought both were excellent. Alistair Johnston, similar to Bombito, you kind of know what you're expecting nowadays. You're, you, you put these guys in the Maple Leaf, you're expecting an 8 out of 10 or more, and that's what Johnston did. He had some big tackles, he was a workhorse. I just love AJ's game. Every, everyone loves watching him, whether you're a Canada fan or a Celtic fan or even just a football fan. Johnston is a, is a natural right back. He continues to impress me and he had put in another good shift. But I really want to also highlight Richie Larea because going into this window without Derek Cornelius and Alfonso Davies at the back, which along with Bombito and Johnson have really been our solid back force ever since Copa America and Jesse Marsh came in. So without Davies, our skipper, our, our best player, we needed to see somebody to step up. There was a bit of a debate whether it was going to be Atacubi or Larea. I was pretty firm that I thought it was going to be Larea. I think Jesse Marsh trusts him more right now, which he feels comfortable playing him. And every time I've seen Larea recently playing for Canada, he's been excellent, whether he's at right mid or he's a right back or now left back. Sometimes in the past, I thought over on the left-hand side, it wasn't overly convincing. Not that he was ever like really poor. I just didn't know if it was quite a fit. I kind of liked him more on the right, whether that was in the midfield or right back his natural position. But I, I love the combination between Larea and Schaffelberg. They were dangerous all game. Richie in these type of CONCACAF environments just really thrives when he shows just that, you know, that that, that CONCACAF-ness to his game, I guess. Like, he, he can get under the skin of the, the opposing players. He's very good at drawing fouls when he's in a position where there's players kind of closing down on him and he's, he's stuck. He knows how to draw a clever foul. And all game, he was just he was just a rock star, whether it was going forward, tracking back, combining, getting those clever fouls. And, and they're important because when you have the ability to be able to draw a foul when your team's under a bit of a pressure, if it comes from a mistake or just comes from a, a good press from Cernom, it's really helpful just to alleviate that pressure and allow a bit of a restart. And I just noticed today he didn't really put in a wrong foot. And I absolutely love the performance of the back line, especially those three. 
For my third takeaway, we're moving our way up the pitch into the midfield where Schwanier came in for Kone alongside Eustachio. I thought they were excellent as well with the press dictating the pace. Their passing over set pieces today I thought were really good. We knew that Junior, Junior Hoylet being in this uh, squad he would maybe be helpful in terms of coming on and maybe uh, being over those set pieces or maybe starting this game because he scored the goal in the last game and being that set piece specialist. But I thought Schwanier and Eustachio over set pieces were nice. The one goal that JD scored off the beginning came from Eustachio playing it over to Schwanier and a really nice ball put in. They just looked a little bit more quality in the ball. Schwanier looks really comfortable in this midfield. Eustachio and Schwanier have a nice relationship right now. So Kone will be the main man, but when he's not available, it's nice to know that you have depth. You have guys you can rely on. I just talked about Richie Larea. Schwanier absolutely fits into that category. Can come in and do a job when need be. And if we move up to the front two as well, Jonathan David, Kyle Aaron. I don't know what more I can say about Jonathan David. He is loving his football right now. Scoring against massive clubs in the Champions League. Scoring for pretty much every time he plays for Canada. He scored his 31st goal. He's right now the lone all-time leading goal scorer for the Canadian national team. I love the way he just drifts and finds space and plays that kind of free roam number 10. His passing ability today was excellent. His The goal he scored was nice as well. He's just the complete player and he does really compliment Kyle Lahren. I had a feeling that Lahren was going to come back into this match after not starting the first leg just because the press wasn't quite clicking. I figured that they just go with the front two. That's proven and that's what they did and Laren had a bit of a, I thought a bit of a quiet game in that first half he came a little bit more lively in the second half put in an excellent ball as well for for Schaffelberg the press is like what I've been talking about throughout this entire video it w was great and it starts from the beginning it starts from the very top with Laren and David and I just really liked the performance of, of those four players that I just highlighted. It was great to see, and I'm expecting more from them when we head into the semifinals. For my fourth takeaway, I'm highlighting Jacob Schaffelberg. How can I not? He scored two goals. It sucked coming into this window knowing that Liam Miller, who I thought was really finding some good form at his club as well as with Canada, I thought it was going to be a really good battle to see who's going to be that starting left mid, Schaffelberg or Liam Miller, but with Miller getting that unfortunate injury and ruling him out for the season, it meant that it was pretty much Jacob Schaffelberg's to run with, and he did. Scores two goals like this. He's, he's a menace. We know how, how forward he can be when he runs at defenders, his pace, the problems it causes. I mean, when you have a, the ability of like Bombito just to pump a ball up there and know that you have someone making a, a clever run and can get in and score, it's always nice. He he a little bit like Larey as well, and it's funny that they're both on the left-hand side. Can cause problems, not only with the speed and, and their play, but also just the ability to get under players' skins. And, and you saw that some of the Suriname players pretty early in this match we're getting frustrated I thought the ref was gonna maybe lose a, a bit of control of this one but at the end of the day Canada just ended up running them over Jacob Schaffelberg was a big part of that and getting the end product for me is big because Schaffelberg no matter what really impresses Copa America he started scoring goals getting assists and that's when we started to say okay what kind of player this this is this guy going to be but then he goes back to Nashville and doesn't really have that end product again so it's great to see him get a couple goals and with Miller out and Hoylet probably being used more as a, as a super sub type player. I think this is going to be Schaffelberg's position to really lock down and more than likely be our main guy at the left midfield position going forward into the semifinals as well as probably Gold Cup. For my fifth and final takeaway, I just want to see more of the same come March. This is a huge opportunity for Canada to finally win a trophy, the first one since the 2000 Gold Cup. I think they have a really good chance to do it. Nations League is best on best right now, so there's a good chance if we do these type of performances in the semifinals, we could end up in the finals probably against the US. And those, in my opinion right now, those are the two best teams in CONCACAF. And if we want to show that we are the current kings of CONCACAF, the current top dog, we need to win a trophy. We need to do it against the United States. And there's a great opportunity that we could potentially do it in March. We've been playing some really good football. Everything Jesse Marsh has done since coming in is, has really impressed me, the way that he's got the best out of these players, the way that he's made quick decisions, that he's stuck with it. He's he's had the certain tweaks he's had to, to do. He's improved our depth within this team and has asked a lot out of these players and they have delivered. It's been an absolute joy to watch. I've, I've really enjoyed covering it on the channel as well and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it at home. So let me know down in the comment section if you agree with my five takeaways, if you have any takeaways for yourselves and if of course, let me know if you're excited and if you think that we can win the Nations League come March. And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers, friends.